Hi, my name is Deborah Saunders. I'm the medical director of the Department of Dental Oncology at the Northeast Cancer Centre in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. We're a very fortunate cancer centre to have a dedicated Department of Dental Oncology affiliated um, for the care of our cancer patients. I started working here in 2001. Um, the foresight that our cancer centre had in understanding that oral complications are among the most common reasons why patients have to discontinue or delay their cancer treatments and having a dedicated um, dentist with the expertise of caring for cancer patients and their complications has kind of led me to want to evolve not just beyond my own city, um, not beyond my own country, but working with a more global organization in developing evidence-based care for our cancer patients. The World Dental Federation, better known as the FDI, uh, reached out to the Multinational Association for Support of Cancer and its affiliate um, society, the International Society of Rural Oncology. We were asked to collaborate with them on a project that they saw um, in, in high need uh, to disseminate information to the community dentist on a global basis about how to better manage complications in cancer patients. Uh, we formed a task team within the International Society of Oral Oncology and developed um, evidence-based materials uh, for clinicians' use, um, but also we saw the need to translate this um, to the patients. We also saw the need to create it digitally based um, with risk calculators and also printable patient information that can either be printed on site or emailed to the patients. We thought that this would be the easiest way for our clinicians in oncology and also our community practicing clinicians to be able to collaborate better. So as a uh, dentist who practices in a cancer centre, one of the prime focus areas of patients that I see on a daily basis are patients that are having head and neck cancer treatments. When we look across the spectrum of uh, cancer therapies for all different types of disease sites, um, we see most of the complications in patients having head and neck cancer treatments. The next common would be patients undergoing stem cell transplant, and then those receiving chemotherapy for solid tumors such as breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer. Moving back to our head and neck cancer population, the types of side effects that these patients can experience are among permanent taste loss, um, uh, taste dysfunction for life, uh, permanent dry mouth, mouth sores like a third degree burn from the radiation treatments, stiffening of the jaw muscles so it's hard for patients to eat, um, and then the disfiguring nature of how we treat cancer for our head and neck cancer patients sometimes involves surgery, which can also impact their ability to function and speak properly. Patients are at high risk for infections during certain types of cancer treatments, and we all know as dental clinicians that the mouth is one of the dirtiest um, parts of our body, um, can have the highest uh, risks for infection if patients have uh, things like dental decay and gum disease uh, before their cancer treatments start. So it's imperative as experts in the field to be able to disseminate that to our community dental professionals, but also educate our oncologists on the importance of good dental health um, prior and during and after patients' cancer treatments. As a medical oncologist, uh, one of my priorities is to communicate side effects of systemic treatments to the patients that I'm treating. I focus mainly, uh, especially close to the diagnosis, to those side effects that uh, will determine the patient to receive, to agree to receive treatment or not. I would say that the first uh, barrier is that definitely I'm not an, a dental expert and I um, I'm not able to communicate all the possible issues that could put a patient at risk of developing osteonecrosis or other dental complications secondary to treatment. 
Um, and that's why it's so important to have a team that gives uh, that support. At the center that I work, we have the advantage that we have an in-house team that does the assessments. Uh, but that's not always the advantage of every cancer center. I love this Oncolab app. I think it's going to be very user friendly. What the app is going to enable us to do is take the information that we have from the literature, the evidence-based guidelines that have been developed, the clinical practice tools that have been published, and incorporate them into one app um, that has all the different disease sites so that the oncologist and the clinician dentist can communicate more effectively. This is going to provide a more um, continuous, um, close collaboration with consistent evidence-based care for our patients in the oncology fields, but also in the dental community. More so, these are going to be translated into various different languages. Presently, we have them translated into 26 different languages. Based on each disease site, we're going to have patient-centered care based on their risk for developing certain side effects. So the biggest benefit uh, with this app is the risk calculator. For example, if you want to do an extraction on a patient, uh, there's a series of questions uh, you answer quite simply, and it will quantify the risk as being mild, moderate, or severe. And at that point, you can decide, is it safe to do this extraction in your office, or perhaps you should be referring it to a specialist. Uh, obviously, of great benefit to the patient. Risk calculators have been built into each of the disease sites so that clinician, oncologists, and dental clinicians can assess the risks of their patients developing certain side effects by just doing the risk calculator. I find this as an advancement in what we have not had before um, for this type of communication. Never before has uh, community dentistry collaborated in a way like this with the um, clinical oncologists in areas where there is the absenteeism of a dental oncologist on site. I'm really excited about this. I really see that this is going to open doors and expand the ability to provide evidence-based care for our patients inside the cancer centre and outside in the community. So you can have a patient who presents with pre-existing periodontal disease or dental disease that can be uh, rather chronic um, and quiet and once they start cancer therapy uh, it can become rather acute and even life-threatening. The Oncolab app manages this type of situation with the use of the medical clearance forms, the referral forms, uh, the information in the table form uh, under the management and prevention headings. It's very easy to access and navigate and uh, making for seamless communication between dentists and specialists. So presently Oncolab has been launched. It's available on Android and Apple. Um, I use it um, on a daily basis to promote through um, our interdisciplinary colleagues on the aspect of what we're creating. One aspect so far has been launched on medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. We plan to have the full app launched um, by the end of 2022, and we are already piloting the benefits and the success of the first aspect of that uh, disease section, um, medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. We're very excited to be able to roll out the rest, and uh, work is underway on completing those final areas. This app is going to help educate the clinician oncologist and the oncology team, as well as our community dentists on who is responsible for which management um, of which complication, but then understanding across the whole continuum of cancer therapy that um, oral care is a standard of care for all clinicians, all healthcare professionals to be endorsing for patients. So I do see that that's how, the, how we have developed the app and that's really what our ultimate goal is to educate the clinicians as they read through the app but also be able to use it as a tool for communication um, between health professionals.